The sad thing with brainwashed victims is that they don't even realize that their minds have been twisted. So, can you even tell how much you have been brainwashed about your beliefs about money? Imagine how much those beliefs are working against you, keeping you poor. Let's clear this up and break those false beliefs. In this video, we'll go over the top 10 false beliefs about money that keep you poor and miserable. We've all heard those phrases before, and many of us even use them regularly. Some of these statements may sound reasonable, but might hinder your efforts to become rich. If you want to break your financial mind free, stick around till the end of this video because you'll thank me later. Let's go. Number 10. A penny saved is a penny earned. It's a good idea to avoid using that penny by saving it. Still, much work is involved in developing substantial wealth rather than surrendering that penny to the cashier. Suppose you want to properly experience the effects of saving money. In that case, you have to maximize your savings and let compounded interest accelerate the growth exponentially. Although this proverb is true, it only tells a part of the story. The truth is that saving is a good idea but it is not the only thing that you should rely on if you want to build a sustainable future. Sometimes, spending money on something that you could do yourself for free is advisable. For example, consider paying someone else to mow the lawn, go shopping, cook, or clean up your house. This way, you have made money if you can earn more during that time than you pay someone else. Or, you can buy time to relax so that you'll be recharged for your big money-making tasks ahead of you. An exception will be if you enjoy any of those activities. Number 9. Your home is your best asset. If you own a house where you live, you might think that that's your best asset, but unfortunately, that's not true. While this may be the most contentious financial lie ever, it bears repeating that your home is not an investment. A house is where you and your family will spend most of your time, and it will be yours free and clear once you will have paid the mortgage in full. Yet, until that day comes, it will be draining you financially for years to come through maintenance costs, property tax, and compounded interest that you pay to the bank. I don't think people should stop buying homes for themselves. Far from it. Owning a home is an excellent thing if you want a stable place to live and a comfortable place to rest your head each night. But that's about it. Buying a house is a good idea if you can afford it, but don't see it as an asset because it's a liability. It doesn't provide you with an income. Nevertheless, you shouldn't count on making a profit from that property as it would be detrimental to your financial situation. Some wealthy investors buy rental properties that generate cash flow first and only buy their house if the positive cash pays for their own home. Number 8. Rich people are evil. Thoughts like, it's not fair that rich people live in excess abundance while my family has nothing, likely give rise to this misconception. Rich people have different values and priorities than the poor. You can either wallow in your anger and complaints, or make the astute decision to educate yourself with the knowledge of the wealthy and reject the teachings of the poor. Because financial literacy is not widely taught and has little chance of entering our educational institutions, poverty will remain a severe problem for many people. While they should, most individuals don't talk about what makes them wealthy. Somehow, the public has bought into the lie that those at the top of society's economic food chain must be inherently evil and guilty of awful acts to have gotten where they are. Associating the rich with bad is a surefire way to kill your desire to become wealthy for the apparent reason that nobody aspires to be evil. However, when interacting with the public, you'll see that just as many poor people are evil as rich people. Stop thinking that if you're bad enough, you'll get rich. Sure, there are some nefarious wealthy individuals, but the same can be said of the poor. A better approach would be become wealthy and demonstrate that you can be rich and good. Number 7. Saving isn't worth it in small amounts. Many individuals are their own worst enemies when it comes to saving because it is disastrous to believe that saving even a tiny amount is pointless. Unfortunately, so many individuals mistakenly believe that you need a six-figure income to begin saving. Saving won't make you wealthy. To become rich, you need to start putting money aside as soon as possible. The first step in saving is the most important. No matter how little you have to work with, it would help if you started immediately. The further you get along, the less effort you'll have to put in. If you have access to the appropriate resources and guidance, the sky's the limit. Your ability to invest grows alongside your confidence in saving. When saving money, what matters most is not if you start, but if you keep going. This idea has little to do with financial stability. You shouldn't let the fact that you don't have much money begin to be why you never save any money, but you should do so if you have the means. After finishing this video, watch our other video to learn how to start making money even if you have zero funds or are in debt. Number six, avoid taking risks with your money. The fact is that to succeed as an entrepreneur, you will inevitably have to take some risks. If you are intensively aware of the risks, you should probably reconsider your career choice. Many successful business owners have taken calculated risks to advance their companies. You should be willing to take calculated risks. They're essential. 
but it doesn't mean that you should ignore all due diligence. Taking risks does not mean being naive and hoping for the best. Instead, it requires diligent effort and forethought to identify opportunities with an asymmetric risk to reward ratio in your favor. Being willing to take financial risk means never wondering what if. Do you know what Jeff Bezos said? He said that when he turns 80, he knows he won't be looking back with any regrets. His biggest regret is thinking about what could have been different if he hadn't given it a shot. How is that even possible? Well, it's simple. He reasoned that if he gave it a try and failed, it wouldn't be a wasted experience, but something to learn from. Number five, living below your means will make you rich. According to a critical examination of these people, most people who adhere to this financial maxim struggle financially. This mindset will likely continue for the rest of their lives unless they change their thinking. Living within your means can mean saving $5,000 or $10,000 monthly. Both actions signal that you are spending less than you earn, but one will leave you in far better financial position than the other. So, look beneath the surface to reap your rewards while having a healthy financial position. Identify how you can generate a sizable difference between your income and expenses while still leaving room for investments and rich life experiences. Number four, don't analyze your financial habits. I've seen numerous people stick well to this maxim, but then how true is this belief? Well, let's find out. Earning more money is only one aspect of improving your financial standing. If you think you don't need to examine your spending and saving patterns, you should immediately reconsider. In fact, most millionaires keep track of all of their expenses. What gets measured gets managed, as management legend Peter Drucker said. Yes, earning money is the first step towards financial freedom. Still, you'll never build substantial wealth if you don't examine your spending patterns. There is an ongoing dynamic between the money you make and the money you spend or lose. The truth is that having good financial abilities is more about managing and not losing money than only making it. No matter how much money you make, you're doomed if you don't think through your financial decisions. For example, lottery winners who suddenly obtain large amounts of cash often swiftly lose everything. The reason is that they didn't have the financial education and discipline to keep it and invest it. Number three, money is evil. We hear it everywhere, money is evil. But in fact, this saying is just the shortened and misinterpreted version of the original Bible quote by Apostle Paul, who originally said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Thus, it is not money itself that can corrupt us. The saying continues to say, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Thus, one has to keep one's feet on the ground as a compassionate and humble person, independent of the money one has. This mindset requires you to have a firm grasp on the idea that all people, regardless of their social economic standing, are on an equal footing. With this discipline, self-control, and frame of mind, it is only natural to cultivate the desire to put your financial resources to good use, so you can still be a good person no matter how much money you have. Number two, money doesn't buy happiness. Whenever I hear rich or poor people alike use the statement that money can't buy you happiness, I have to suppress a frustrated shake of my head. You can indeed experience much more happiness in life if you remove all the problems that come with having no money. Yes, money alone can't make you happy, but it surely helps you to get there. What you want to avoid is focusing on making money alone, disregarding or sacrificing all the other things in life that will contribute to your happiness. But it is irrational to say that money can't buy happiness when there are indeed expenses and purchases that, if not made, will keep you miserable. Examples include shelter, food, healthcare, insurance, retirement fund, education, needs for your family and kids, and so on. And being able to travel and go on adventures and have pleasant experiences in view will surely help to experience a joyful life with rich memories. And in some cases, it can also provide great joy to help and support others that are in need. I agree, however, that money can't buy happiness, love, or kindness in the sense that you can get it from others if they don't want to give it to you or if you don't deserve it as a person. In the end, if you have enough money, that will help you evolve to being your best self while giving love and attention to those that are important to you. So don't let making money lose out on this. Number one, more money means more problems. This phrase originates from the ancient philosophers who argued about negative sensations of loss that can scale with the value of the lost object. So spending more on things and acquaintances will come with greater responsibilities and stress. While there is truth to this statement, how much you spend is entirely under your control. Therefore, having more money doesn't hold you back from keeping a normal lifestyle while enjoying your free time and doing whatever you like because you no longer have to work at a job. This choice is called stealth wealth and, as the name implies, more wealthy people than you think are living this lifestyle while hiding their riches. Bonus belief, millionaires must be workaholics. Finally, another legendary lie holds that millionaires must be workaholics who carry so much stress that they can't relax and enjoy life. 
Sadly, many people hold this belief to be true when in fact many middle and lower class workers spend countless hours at their jobs while still being stuck financially. Do you know what is good about having more money? The more money you have, the more power you have in every facet of your life. This power includes buying back your time to regain your freedom by hiring employees who work for you. In many cases, wealthy people only reach the millionaire level and beyond only because they learn to delegate their work to others. This approach doesn't mean that they are necessarily exploiting people. On the contrary, many people aren't ready for the ups and downs of building a business and they will happily work a stable job and provide for their families. So break those limiting beliefs about money and start amassing significant wealth. Adopt the mindset of regarding money as a tool that serves your best interests. Thus, it can indeed help to solve your problems and help to bring you happiness. Keep thinking that way if wealth has brought you joy already. If not, perhaps you need a shift in your perspective on finances. So watch the videos on our channel to learn more about money and becoming wealthy. Thanks for watching.